Hi, uh, this talk is about research dissemination. Uh, I'm Franco Pestilli, Associate Professor at the University of Texas, Austin. And this is part of the Open and Reproducible Neuroimaging um, uh, course at Human Brain Mapping 2023. In this section, we will cover uh, methods and uh, opportunities for data sharing, code sharing, derived data sharing, publications of papers, and everything beyond that. Historically, uh, the paper has been the last uh, ultimate uh, goal of scientific production in most cases. Uh, and, and in practice, papers are only the advertisement of a much more complex process of scientific inquiry that goes all the way from designing, collecting data, analyzing data, and then generating insights and results and uh, writing. Uh, yet papers as of today still are the um, one of the most important products of science, scientists for multiple reasons. And uh, papers uh, are uh, the key uh, product that allows communications of scientific insights and, uh, and novelty. Uh, yet many of us uh, in the process of scientific inquiry generate uh, products that uh, are just um, beyond papers. Uh, uh, these products uh, can uh, are or can be data or software tools or hardware tools. And uh, they are uh, also uh, important, these products, as much as the paper per se. And there's been a process in the community of realization that um, uh, these products uh, are important to share for reasons of reproducibility, reasons of scientific rigors and transparency, but, but also uh, are uh, products that uh, we're just good at. Some of us are good at collecting data and making data available. Some of us are better at software and developing software and others are developing even hardware. So we will cover next the, the uh, opportunity for data sharing sharing code and also talking a little bit about how to, to share derived data. The FAIR principles uh, published now a few years ago uh, set the stage for uh, a series of uh, movements in the community for pushing data sharing. Uh, the FAIR principle state that data should be made available and, and that may, making available data means that the data has to be findable. There has to be the right pointers that are identifiable for many of us. Uh, has to be accessible once you know the, the data are found. Uh, the data has to be accessible to individuals and researchers. It's to be interoperable, so it has to be described using standard procedures and, and standards in general. And they're reusable, meaning they have to be enough details metadata so that the, 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 the data can be used for other studies uh, beyond the original purpose. Uh, data sharing is becoming growing in the community and there's multiple benefits to data sharing and, uh, uh, and, and, and indeed some of the journals now require uh, fair data sharing and, 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 and not just fair data sharing, also sharing of code and other uh, materials produced as part of the research uh, output, the research process uh, can be shared or must be shared for some, some journals. Importantly, here in the US, uh, there has been a tremendous push this year, just in February, the NIH has uh, uh, announced a new requirement for any new grant that requires, uh, will acquire data. Uh, there will be a requirement for sharing the data uh, for spatting the FAIR principles in a way that is accessible, interoperable, and reusable. That fair share uh, was a novelty for the whole field of science and very important uh, for uh, society. And, but neuroimaging has been actually leading the ways for uh, creating uh, infrastructure for data sharing. 
Uh, for example, Open Neuro is one of the major archive for sharing uh, MRI data. Dendi and Dabi allow sharing neurophysiology data in humans and animals. And, but there's also CONP and eBrains in Europe and uh, Canada that uh, allow sharing of data uh, with different type of requirements. Gnode is another type of infrastructure that allows data sharing and the NDA um, is the National Data Archive by the NIH that uh, it's actually where the data of the NIH uh, uh, should be shared ultimately at the end of the project. Brain Life is a not quite a data sharing platform, but it's a platform for uh, a data analysis for reproducible data analysis, but that support sharing of data once the data are imported, analyzed, and uh, and processed through the platform. Nitric instead is a it's a, a mechanism for sharing. It's a platform for sharing tools in general. It's a publishing uh, uh, archive for tools of software or resources, and uh, it's a very great asset for the whole community. In addition to uh, repositories and archives where you can share your own data, there's been uh, many uh, great projects that have been sharing data for you and for your research. The UK Biobank uh, has over a million individuals uh, sharing data, uh, different modality of data, uh, and, and the Human Connection Projects uh, uh, has uh, uh, about a thousand, over a thousand individuals that share data in multiple modality. The Cambridge Aging uh, Neuroscience data set uh, shares data from over 600 individuals across the lifespan. Omega uh, shares MEG data, uh, and it's based here in Canada. And ABCD is the Adolescent Brain Cognitive Development, shares data, will share data on 10,000 individuals across um, multiple years of their life. And INDI also is one of the initiatives that has been leading the way for the data sharing efforts in the community. Uh, uh, the, the, besides these specialized archives, and repositories. Um, there's also more generic archives that allow data sharing uh, independent of modality. Uh, uh, whereas, for example, in Open Neuro, you can share MRI data. Uh, on OSF, you can share any type of data. And there's no requirement for a data standard, such in, instead of Open Neuro or in Brain Life, there's a very strict requirement for standards uh, for the data to get in and out. You know, they will come formatted in a certain way. Zenodo and Figshare are two other ways that are how I, widely used in the community. They allow to share uh, files, any type of files, and they assign a, a digital object identifier to the file so that the file can be shared and added to uh, papers and publications. GitHub is perhaps the leading platform nowadays for uh, sharing code and software, but it's just more than sharing. It's also uh, development as a whole so, uh, uh, series of services that support the process of scientific and uh, software development. Data sharing is becoming more and more important. Uh, in fact, uh, recently uh, there's been a push from uh, scientific descriptor papers to data descriptors uh, with the idea that just simply describing important data sets takes time and it takes space on the page. And uh, one of the key uh, leading uh, uh, journal is scientific, Nature Scientific Data, uh, where you uh, uh, provide a simple detailed description of uh, data sets that are of value to the community. You don't have to have results. You don't have to have findings. You don't have to be doing science. It's mostly about how will I reuse your data uh, following the fair principles. Uh, because data sharing is becoming important, there's been uh, uh, initiative to recognize the efforts of sharing and, and some journals have, embracing, have been embracing uh, budgets to support individuals that, um, um, that share uh, code or data or assets in general. And prices such as the uh, human brain mapping uh, data sharing price uh, have been put forth. So, so, so to say, to support uh, uh, individual efforts for data sharing. 
So uh, in addition to sharing uh, the raw data or you know not yet analyzed data, uh, sharing derived data is also of value. Uh, but sharing derived data, what does it mean by derived data? Data that has been processed, data has, can, can be processed minimally. Uh, for example, the Human Connectome Project has initially shared both raw and minimally processed data, uh, or data can be processed more. And the idea that these data are of help and use utility for others, uh, it's been in the community for a while. Yet sharing derived data, it's actually non-trivial because whereas we are reaching maturity uh, for having um, the, the, the descriptions and standards for descriptions of uh, data, uh, when the data are raw or minimally processed, uh, we don't have yet standards for, uh, for describing uh, processed data. Uh, BEADS, for example, is growing toward common derivatives. There's, uh, there's uh, the, the standards uh, has uh, um, common derivative descriptions and is actively working on extending the common derivatives to the different modalities. One example that I have here is an effort that we're leading um, uh, to describe uh, brain connectivity data, the multiple aspects of brain connectivity data coming from different modalities. But there are some resources where sharing uh, derived data is possible. For example, NeuroVault uh, has been uh, around for some time, and there it's a, uh, you can share statistical map, fMRI maps, and uh, parcellations and atlases coming from a uh, functional MRI or PET, for example. Um, uh, template flow, it's a way to share uh, maps and uh, st across standards and in a way that it's reusable. And uh, brain life uh, that I mentioned before allows uh, sharing of derived data, highly derived data. Uh, indeed, if you, if you take raw data to the platform and use the platform for first pre-processing the data using uh, workflows such as fMRI prep or QSI prep. And then after that, you do your statistical analysis in Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, the platform allows to share uh, all the derived products in a pseudo beads format, you know, pseudo because there isn't a description from beads for many of the products that can be generated on brain life, but they, they look like beads uh, standard uh, outputs. In addition to the data, you can share also uh, code that you use, the Jupyter Notebooks, and also all the apps that you use for pre-processing can be shared, the version with the right version and the right, the right parameters. Uh, fair sharing also involves tables and figures and slides, uh, and that to say that uh, it doesn't stop uh, data products such as a nifty file or a tractography file or parcellations or a statistical map. The data sharing and fair sharing goes all the way to uh, the figures and the tables and the presentations like this one that is actually an open presentation for people to reuse for their talks. So after data sharing, there's publications and then also beyond publication, there's other aspects to research that are important and are becoming more and more important, such as inclusion and community uh, 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 and community research. There have been efforts to develop best practices to share results and uh, scientific papers yet don't have uh, a standardized way of reporting statistics or figures or results sections or uh, method sections. And the uh, Kubidas uh, uh, human brain mapping, uh, the committee have been uh, producing descriptions of how and best practices or how this should be done or could be done for uh, MRI, MEG, and EEG. There's also upcoming guidelines for PET, and, uh, and there's also some uh, reporting templates from uh, for EEG. Uh, from in front of their Tamis group. Uh, one thing to remember about publications is that publications are not accessible necessarily to everyone. They might be accessible to you, just like the nature paper I showed a few 
uh, slides back uh, was accessible to me through the University of Texas, see down there, uh, but that other universities, smaller colleges or individuals in different countries than the US, uh, Europe uh, might not actually have access or because their institution might not provide uh, a, a very expensive subscription to, to, the, to the nature journals. So paper should be made accessible to everyone, preferably, and uh, and there's uh, because of the paywalls uh, be, that where publication lie, and uh, these are things are changing, and the agencies are trying to make uh, lower the barrier that this paywall create, and uh, but uh, it's slow to 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 embrace these. Uh, new practices for publishing. Uh, so preprints has been the community, um, the community uh, work to allow sharing of publications uh, without avoiding journals, uh, but avoiding journals, but still working with journals. Uh, preprints, in fact, publish papers before they end up on a journal, before the review process has happened, before the um, uh, the editorial work that the editors in, in these journals do, uh, but they are at the same time freely available to everyone, and they uh, they might appear to you just like a journal, but they're not. They're available in Africa. They're available in in, in Latin America. They're Amer in America everywhere where there's the internet access. They can access and download the papers from these archives. Uh, there's uh, also the recent process to push for making transparent the review process has created uh, 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 preprints also that contains reviews as part of the publications or the incoming publications. Um, um, there's been also more recent uh, uh, technically advanced experiments proposing new publishing models uh, where you publish data, code, and text together. These are called hybrid models. Neurolibre from the human brain mapping uh, uh, is for one example. You can publish on Neurolibre uh, text, a paper, and, and, and the text comes as a, with attached Jupyter notebooks where you can uh, uh, perform and reproduce the analysis. And uh, publishers have also been partnering with companies such as CodeOcean so as to uh, support some form of interactive computing as part of papers. The idea here is to provide publications that don't just uh, reproduce written words, but they uh, uh, put uh, words in the context of the analysis and the analysis are interactive where uh, readers can change parameters, rerun the analysis, try the analysis with the different data sets, et cetera. Uh, Brain Life mentioned before, it's an example of uh, this sort of experiment. Uh, the platform allows to publish data, workflows, we call them apps, uh, statistic, uh, and then also statistical analysis code in Jupyter Notebooks into a single bundle. So if you uh, import data into Brain Life using EasyBeads uh, tool developed as part of the platform, you can um, uh, process the data using standardized workflows. You can do your statistical analysis. And at the end, you can create a publication that contains a single record with uh, data, all the apps and the workflows and the statistical and the Jupyter notebooks that you choose to share with the community can be published with a single digital object identifier. The, the, the platform, it's not supporting now publications or papers, but allows some amount of text to be written there as a readme file for describing the records that is produced. Uh, but the, the research life cycles uh, go beyond publications and data, and uh, it's important, especially for the young uh, of you in the community, to disseminate their, your results and to uh, make sure your voice are heard in the community. So participating to conferences, workshops, and uh, for the one of you on social media, uh, perhaps using social media to uh, make sure that there's a, enough reach for your scientific insights and publications and uh, make sure that uh, enough people uh, are, uh, are aware of the publication. Sharing presentations and posters uh, presented at conferences is an excellent way for uh, yeah, the younger folks, but also the older folks to, um, um, uh, 
to allow uh, a wide reach of the uh, research process as the re before the research process reaches the published uh, version that is often in uh, in in publication. It's important and it's important movement that uh, the community is doing is to create an inclusive safe space for everyone, for uh, people coming from different backgrounds, for different types of diversity. And, and uh, the, the goal for the community is to create a, 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 an equitable, uh, inclusive uh, space that uh, respects all the diversity that we might have cultural, sexual orientation, but also uh, um, uh, nation and uh, coming from uh, high or low and middle uh, income countries and, uh, and, all, and, and also stages of career, et cetera. So this is very, very important and it's a, an, an active process because often the lack of inclusion, the lack of uh, safe space, the lack of diversity is the invisible challenge and we have to actively work for to make sure that we are aware of it. One example that I'm proud of, <laughs> this is Ebere uh, Bogu. Ebere is a collaborator of mine from Nigeria and Ebere uh, doesn't quite have a community around her that uh, for which she was able to learn and perform neuroimaging research, but she's very eager. So she came to my lab and learned a little bit how to do neuroimaging and using the standards and using brain life and platforms and all the tools that we discussed before and went back to Nigeria and collected data on uh, uh, in Nigeria, uh, kind of reaching out to uh, MRI centers that do normally clinical work because they don't have dedicated scanners at her university. And, uh, and now we have a paper, a data descriptor in the review that uh, presents actually the first Nigerian data set and it's an interesting uh, uh, data set that is likely to produce historical value. Uh, the, uh, the quality and the resolution of the data set is uh, representative of the region and uh, different from what we're used to in uh, other uh, parts of the world. By providing uh, resources and promoting and thinking about um, um, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, we are uh, in the position to make a change, to change the way the field goes, make uh, uh, the field better, uh, uh, attract uh, talent, attract uh, diversity, and attract uh, of opinions, of experience, and cultures. Thank you very much. <laughs>